So I'd like to go ahead and um, walk you guys through um, the water quality lab. Um, there's two ways to get to it. You can go to the content section of the course or you can do what I like to do um, and you can go to the aquatic biomes course resource newsletter um, at the top of your course. Um, again, this is how I get to them. Um, so if you look at this here, you can see um, the water quality lab. It has a link to the handout and also tells you what page it is on. Um, I've got a link to the field guide that you need. And then if you look at it now, you'll see I've got the nice new data tables that I made for you guys there. And um, I also have the, um, the Q value tables there. Um, for any of these assignments in the course resource newsletters, um, if someone has asked me a question, I have the question and answer um, for that question there as well. That way um, you can see what they've asked. I also have um, different graphics that can help you and some videos that can help you. And um, there's also in the new versions, um, you'll see that there's a a study guide at the very top of the course resource newsletter. So anyway, um, let's go ahead and click on the lab and you can see here's your lab. Um, you're gonna, you wanna go to a state park um, with an adult. That way, um, you know, the water is fairly clean and the water's been monitored. Um, if you click on the link, you can find the state parks and then the library can actually give you a parking pass. Um, for this lab, you're going to use the uh, water quality kit that you got in your um, in your box of AP supplies at the beginning of the semester. So now you actually get to use that. So that's kind of exciting. Um, and then you'll need some of these other things like the forceps and stuff like that. So um, when you're ready to ID your inverts, you can go um, here and you can see that we've got a list and kind of some what the inverts look like and things like that. So you can go ahead, you'll have them to um, ID them. Now, um, this data table I didn't really like and I didn't really like the other one either because it's a PDF, you can't really edit it. Um, and so what I did is I made you guys um, a new one um, that you guys can use. So, um, and I, again, I have that uploaded to the course resource newsletter. So. Um, all the data I'm using in this uh, walkthrough is completely fake. I've completely made it up. So please don't use my data um, or your results won't make any sense as you'll see at the end. So, um, and I will link them in um, the Jigsaw resources section and then this walkthrough is in the Jigsaw recording session um, section of the user links. So um, that's where you'll be able to find this data table and the, the Q value table um, that you'll need. So let's go back to the lab and um, we're going to just, um, you guys are going to collect your water and then you're going to count these different critters and I'm just going to put fake numbers in here. Um, you're gonna put them in your little white pan so they're a little easier to see and then I'm gonna put fake numbers. Okay, so do not use the numbers I'm putting because they're totally fake. They're, I, I made them up, they're not real. Um, your data will not make sense if you use my numbers. Okay, they're just here as a example. Okay. So let's put these numbers in. Uh, for the different types of organisms, and then we're going to do some calculations. <clears throat> so now that you've got your numbers, you're going to um, you're going to use this formula, which takes the number of group one organisms and multiply them by three, and the number of group two and multiply them by two, and the number of group three and multiply them by one. Okay, in order to get your answer. So um, we have uh, six organisms in our group one, so we'll do six times three. And then um, in group two, we have um, two organisms, so we're gonna do two times two. And then um, in group three, we have four organisms, so we're gonna do four times one. 
and then we're just going to add those up. And so we've got um, 18 plus 4 plus 4. And um, you're going to get 26. And so um, then you can actually look in your lab. Um, and um, you'll see what your thing is. So if it's 23 and above, it, show, it says that you have excellent water quality. So um, you can write that. And remember, these data tables, you're going to actually need to put them in your lab report. But this at least gives you, you know, um, the data tables are ready to go and you can kind of look at them. Um, again, these values I have for dissolved oxygen, pH, temperature, nitrate, and phosphates are completely fake. I made them up. So please do not use these numbers that I have. Um, they won't make sense. Now for your Q value, um, it says the, the Q values are actually made in, from graphs. And then you use a weighting factor, um, and it doesn't actually tell you how to get the Q value, which is really nice. Um, so, so what I did is um, I went online and I just Googled water quality Q values. Um, you can see it right here, and um, I'm going to take this data table um, that I found that I found this page of all the data. Uh, the different tables for the different values and um, I have this uploaded to the course and it's also in the course resource newsletter so you can look and see what your Q value would be for each um, for each parameter okay and you'll just enter those now if you notice at the bottom of the table we've got some gray values um, we're not gonna look at those in this um, lab we're just gonna use what we have at the top, okay, um, to calculate our um, our uh, score, okay. So we're just taking the Q values from the table, um, and again, mine. I just made mine up, so I changed that one. Um, I changed the nitrate, so it made more sense with the data. Um, and again, you'll just choose like the closest one. If you have like 25 for nitrate, for example, and it's 20 and 30, you could get what's halfway between there's Q values. I didn't want to deal with that, so I just changed my number since it was fake anyway. Um, and then you're going to take your Q value and you're going to multiply it by the weighting factor. So you're going to multiply column B times column C, and then you'll put the answer of B times C in column D. Okay. So um, that's what we're going to do here. We're just going to do this math. Okay, so now I'm adding up column C, and then I'm going to add up column D. Okay, and once I have column C and D um, added up, then I can find my score. Okay. So now we're going to take column C and we're or some C, and we're going to divide it by some D. Okay, and that will give us. A number and then we can look on the lab and it'll tell us if that number means we have poor quality water or excellent water or whatever okay now if you look here um, it says if you're 0 to 25 you have poor water quality remember our animals showed that we had excellent water quality and this is showing that we have poor water quality that's because I made up the numbers right <coughs> so just kind of like keep that in mind 
that you want to pick you want to use your own numbers not mine okay um, because mine are fake and so they obviously don't make any sense then you want to look at these questions and you want to answer these questions in the analysis section of your lab okay and then you can look at this lab report rubric that'll show you you know what you need to do or you can actually go to the um, Dropbox folder for this assignment and um, you can look at it and it will I have to I have to look at it because I'm in the teacher view uh, the Dropbox folder now also has all of this information as well in it uh, but you can actually view the rubric and so you it shows you exactly what you need to do to earn full points okay so um, it's it's pretty handy so definitely look at that rubric um, so you know what you need to do to um, get full points